possess faith. And for you to be a possessor of faith, it means that you are out of the realm of canality or the realm of being carnal. Praise the Lord. It means that you are operating in the spirit. So they that are of the flesh cannot please God. The message translation of the Bible put this same verse of scripture, Romans 8, 7 of verse 8 here, he said, he said and God is in place at being ignored God is not pleased when you ignore him <laughs> praise the Lord so they that are in the flesh, so every time you go to the flesh, what are you doing? you are simply ignoring God Every time you move out and you chose to stay in the flesh, you are simply saying, Lord, this time around, I want to ignore you. Let me just be on my own. I don't want any control. Praise the Lord. I don't want you to control me. Now, let's look at some things here. Some proofs of carnality. What are the proofs of carnality? The first one here. When you begin to despise the word of God, that is the first proof of carnality. You find people when they are reading, opening other literature, newspapers, they are at ease, they enjoy themselves. But when it comes to the Bible, you see yourself struggling. Amen. When you begin to despise the word of God, that is one of the proof of carnality. How do you feel when you are before the world? How do you react? In Proverbs 13 verse 13, it says, Whosoever despises the word shall be destroyed. So the first proof of carnality, uh, to prove to show that you, 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 know, you are walking in the flesh, is when you begin to despise the word. How do you feel when it is time for your business, your career? Amen. The things that brings money to you. How how do you feel? How do you release yourself? You give your all. You give your time. You give your mind. But what about the world? Most of us, we just receive the world with levity. We just receive it as one of those words. As I Proverbs 13 verse 13 said, he said, who so despises the world? And that's what the message Bible says. And God isn't pleased at being ignored. Every time you despise the word, you are simply ignoring God. Because John chapter 1 says in the beginning, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Glory to God. So the Bible of the word that you are ignoring you are, is, is, is nothing but God. You are, every time you ignore the word, you are simply ignoring God. Praise the Lord. Number two, uh, proof of carnality. When you begin to ignore fellowship, when you ignore fellowship, glory to God, is a sign of carnality. In 2 Timothy chapter uh, 3, from verse 1 to 5, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, very important scripture to look at it. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. He said, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And you agree with me that we are in that time. We are in that time. He said, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boastous, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parent, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truths, breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fiends, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, they despise, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. He said, from such, what do you do? You turn away. Looking like God is not the same thing as being God. Having a form, they dress like God. They dress like church people. Amen. But the substance is not in them. Just the shadow. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. They begin to ignore fellowship. Number three, when you begin to doubt what you once believed, Whenever you begin to doubt the things that you once believe. In John chapter 1 verse 29. Look at it. John 1 29 and 36. John gospel chapter 1 verse 29 and 36. Let's have it please. 
John 1 said the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world this was John the Baptist speaking by revelation look at 36 right now and looking upon Jesus he walked he said behold the Lamb of God John the Baptist without anything he just knew because God had told him he said this is the Lamb of God praise the Lord he got it very right he got it very straight but in the gospel of Luke 7 Luke 7 from verse 20 to verse 23 the same John the Baptist that could pick fire the word of knowledge when he saw Jesus but in Luke 7 20 when the men were come unto him they said John the Baptist had sent us unto thee that was when John was arrested and they imprisoned him and he sent for his disciples to Jesus uh, saying are thou he that should come or look we for another initially John said that is the Lamb of God John was operating in the spirit words of what knowledge came forth but now the same John that was operating in the spirit look at him operating in the flesh glory to God look at the next verse and in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirit and unto many that were blind he gave sight then Jesus answering said unto them go your way and tell who John that man that is in the flesh that man that has left the place of the spirit and is now kind of go and tell John what thing do you have seen and heard how that the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised to the poor the gospel is preached but I'm going somewhere 23 and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me you see every time you begin to walk in offense you are walking in the flesh are you hearing me? Jesus said, Blessed is he whosoever that shall not be offended in me. In other words, curse is whosoever that is walking in offense. Praise the Lord. So when you begin to doubt what you once believed, he once believed that this is the Lamb of God. Now he began to doubt. He moved out from the Spirit, the realm of the Spirit, and now he's operating. Now look at it. You see, there are people, there are quite a lot of persons that when they, are, when they move out from the realm of the spirit, they come to the flesh, they begin to suspect everything. Everything they see, they suspect. Glory to God. Now, the enemy can use the face of somebody and appear to you in a dream. Does not mean that that person is demonic. If you're not sensitive, if you're not a spiritual person, so to say, you suspect everything. You had a dream and you woke up in the morning. The person you saw in your dream was the first person you saw in the morning. You say, yes, God showed me my dream. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. Very important. James 1 verse 6 to verse 8. James 1 verse 6 to 8. Look at it. James 1. It said, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord which man are we talking about the man that once what believe in something but now he's doubting in the things that he believed before a double minded man is unstable in how many of his ways in all of his ways number four when your commitment to service begins to dwindle praise the lord begins to dwindle in luke chapter 9 in verse 62 luke 92 jesus speaking there luke 92 and jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god you put your hand on the plow. No, you are good to go. Praise the Lord. It's a sign of commitment. Hallelujah. In the place of service, Lord, I'm sold out. I'm out for service. I'm out for the kingdom. Praise the Lord. You put your hand to the plow. You begin to turn back. You say you are not fit. Looking back is fit for the kingdom. In other words, it's not fit. No one here will look back. I said, no one here will look back. The wife of Lot, you remember? On their way out from Sodom, and they said, don't look back. And she remember, my earring. 
my judge rapper oh that that's she was just thinking so many things she turned back you see the flesh we always want you to turn back the flesh wants you to turn back whereas god has something new for you that he wants to bring forth glory to god i say glory to god number five, number five some proofs of canality when you are no longer sensitive to the leadings of the spirit when you are no longer sensitive to what the leadings of the spirit Georgie 16 verse 20 Georgie 16 20 Samson a man anointed with the spirit of God but it got to a point that Samson left the realm of the spirit and Samson came to the place of the flesh the Bible say and she said the Philistine be upon thee Samson and he awoke out of his sleep and said I will go out as at other times before and shake myself and he wished not that the Lord was departed from him that will not be your story I said that will not be your story in the mighty name of Jesus you always get to a realm whereby you remain sensitive to the leadings of the spirit of God none of us here will miss it I said none of us here will miss it number six proof when you are no or when you no longer pray when you no longer pray in Luke 18 verse 1 he said men ought always to pray and not to faint Proverbs 24 verse 10 if you faint in the day of adversity it is because your strength is small or little number seven the proof of canality when you are walking in hatred anger jealousy and pride is a proof that you are in the flesh hallelujah when you are walking in hatred in anger jealousy and pride second timothy chapter 3 1 and 5 those are proofs that you are in the flesh those are signs of carnality hallelujah I say hallelujah. Now, when we started, I told us that the word canality, you know, simply talks about something of the flesh. Amen. It means worldly. Where some somebody's carnal. You said the person is worldly. Praise the Lord. It talks about terrestrial. Amen. We have celestial, we have terrestrial. So terrestrial is of the flesh. But now, what about spirituality? Because from what we have seen tonight, it is very clear that carnality has a short lifespan. Is that true? To be carnally minded is dead. Carnality may look so good. Carnality may look so attractive. Is that true? But it has a short lifespan. To be carnally minded is dead. To be carnally minded is dead. Now we move out from the place of carnality. Now he said, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what is God saying to us? The people of the world prefer to remain in the realm of carnality. They enjoy it. That is the pleasure of the world. Amen. Moses had this opportunity to enjoy carnality. But in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says uh, that he, he chose to be with the people of God instead of enjoying the pleasure of sin just for a while. The pleasure that sin or carnality gives us is for a while. But the pleasure that spirituality brings our way is eternal. You didn't hear me tonight here. So Moses had to wade it through. He was in the court of Pharaoh. He grew up there in the house of Pharaoh. And he was a potential candidate to become the prime minister. In fact, to become a Pharaoh. Because he was in the lineage there. But he got to a point that Moses got to know that, look, I, I'm not from this side. I don't belong to these people. And Moses came out and he decided to identify with these people. Hallelujah. We all know the story. It was a burden in his heart that led him to leave Egypt and he ran to the wilderness. He ran into his destiny. He ran to a point whereby he had an encounter that turned his life around for the better. Remember, the pleasure of sin is for a while. It's temporary. But the pleasure of what? Of spirituality is forever. It's eternal. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So we have been able to look at the word canality 
And let's look at spirituality. What is spirituality? If to be carnally minded is dead, now he said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Spirituality simply means the quality or the state of being spiritual. The quality or the state of being spiritual. It's not just in dressing, because in most places where we've gone to a point where we're so mindful about dressing, so mindful that the men you must put wear tie, you must put your suit, amen. And the women you must dress, you must look so pious, you must look like the mother of Jesus. It's it's good, it's good. But I've seen quite a lot of persons who dress that way, but they, they are worse than the devil is. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. So it means the quality or the state of being spiritual. A spiritually minded person is so obsessed with spiritual things. Just like uh, a carnally minded person is also obsessed with the things of the world. Are you hearing me? You have enough shoes, you have five shoes, but you, anything you see, you want to buy, even the ones you don't need. Are you hearing me? Canality pushes you. That is why I don't go to I don't go to supermarket just because I want to go. You all agree with me. By the time you enter into a supermarket, you have your ATM card with you. Even if it's polish, you want to buy polish. And you now saw somebody carrying basket. They tempt you once you enter. They said, You need basket. When I go, they say basket. I said, No, praise the Lord. No basket. Because you'll be tempted. By the time you hold that basket, you saw five, six people. They are just picking things. You don't even know where they got money from. Amen. They are picking everything. You too, you'll be tempted. Glory to God. And you move to the counter. In your mind, you expect it. Maybe they say it's a 1,800, for instance. And you go to the counter. And they say your bill calculation is 15,800. Inside, your system will react. Your kidney, everything. We just react but when you look around because people on the queue waiting for you you not behave yourself it's okay why not take it out take it out but deep down you are playing the blood of jesus the blood of jesus 15 000, 15 what <laughs> so i prefer if i have cash if i want to buy something for 500 it better i just put 500 in my pocket and i leave my card and i go there so that i won't be tempted praise the lord does carnally minded person is so obsessed about carnality. Likewise, a spiritually minded person is equally obsessed about spirituality. I saw a Bible that I needed. I have a Bible, a, a, a Jake's Bible, my study Bible. Somebody gave me that Bible 13 years ago and the Bible is old, it's torn. Some pages are weak and I've been designing as I want to buy that. And one of my daughters, when she were discussing and she heard me say, I want to buy that. And the next thing said, Daddy, how much is it? And I told her, that Bible is around 50000 or so. And she sent the money for me to go and get it. And I got the Bible, it's on my table. Because I, when I'm studying, I, I, I enjoy using that Bible. Almost 50000 Somebody who is carnally minded. It's a 50,000, 50 what? When there's Bible of 250. Bible is Bible. Who told you? Praise the Lord. You're passing and say Bible 150, 150. The thing used to be 350 before. Now it's 150. Come and pick your Bible. You say Bible is Bible. How can you buy a Bible that when you want to read, you'll be squeezing your eyes? You say, and Jesus, Jesus come, Jesus came. He came. Why must you punish yourself that way? You want to buy a shoe. Do you buy a shoe that you need five people to help you put your leg inside? No, you get your size and you are walking everybody's looking at that when it's time to get something that will feed you spiritually then you are looking for the one that is cheap a spiritually minded man is obsessed with spiritual things he's obsessed with prayer he's obsessed with fasting glory to god he wants to fast and they are bringing food he said no i, 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 I still want to fast i still want to fast he's spiritually minded because he knows that that food, uh, the food can only, you know, take care of his body. But he knows that the fasting that is fasting is, is a spiritual food on his own. I thought I sp I'm speaking to somebody here tonight. Glory to God. If you look at it in Romans 8 verse 5b. Romans 8 5b said, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they 
that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Spirituality has a long lifespan. Just like I said, carnality has a short lifespan. To be carnally minded is dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Eternal life, it has a long lifespan. Say to your neighbor, long lifespan. Praise the Lord. Just like we're able to look at some proofs of carnality, let's also look at some proofs of spirituality. The first one, when you take delight in studying the word, check anyone you see around you that is always delighted in studying the word, is delighted about the word of God. How do you feel when your neighbor say, uh, 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 there's something I want to share with you. How do you feel when people are talking about scriptures? How do you feel when somebody says, ah, last night, in fact, as I, I, I had a dream and I dreamt, you know, a particular scripture. He's trying to share some things with you. How do you feel? There are people when you want to share with them, even your friends, as you're trying to say, ah, there's something I saw in the Bible. He said, leave that Bible, Joe. They are Christians, churchgoers. They will tell you, leave that Bible. Leave that thing. This is not church. We are talking of business now. Praise the Lord. When you take delight in studying or talking about the word. The psalm is speaking in Psalm 1 verse 1. He said, blessed is the man that walketh north in the count in, in what? In the counsel of the ungodly. That stand not in the ways of sinners. That seated not in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2 says, but his delight is in the law of his God. They need that he meditate day and night. He's the light. Do you take the light in studying the word? Do you take the light, you know, in sharing the word? How do you feel when people are talking to you about scriptures? Very important. When you shun people like that, it's a sign of carnality. Please don't get me wrong. Maybe you are busy, you are in the office, somebody wants to share and you felt that you want to concentrate. It's on the suit. You can tell them, please, for well, now I'm busy. But when you are less busy and they are trying to talk to you, you prefer to do other things than listening to the world. It's a sign of carnality. Carnality is creeping in gradually. Praise the Lord. Number two, proof of carnality, of, I mean of spirituality, please. Number two proofs. When you don't doubt the voice of his spirit when you don't doubt the voice of his spirit in Romans 8 verse 14 as many that are led by the spirit the word spirit led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God the place of carnality they doubt the voice of the spirit now here you don't doubt the voice of the spirit praise the Lord I said, praise the Lord. How do I know that this is the Spirit of God speaking to us? The psalmist said, I will hear what the Lord shall say. He shall speak peace. So the Spirit of God speak peace. The devil speak concern, chaos, trouble. Glory to God. I will hear what the Lord shall speak unto me. He shall speak peace. That is the acid test. Bring peace your way. And when you hear the voice, you don't doubt him. He said, my sheep, they hear my voice. They know my voice and they follow me. As many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. When you hear the Spirit of God speaking to you, a pastor may not be there. Nobody may be there. But as a student of the world, because you see, behind the world is the Spirit of God. So every time you are listening to the word of God, the spirit of God is behind the word. That is why Jesus said in the gospel of John chapter 6, in verse 63, he said, the flesh profited nothing. It is a spirit. He said, it is a spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak to you, what happened? Behind it, spirit. They are spirit and they are life. Behind the words I'm speaking to you, so every student of the word know the voice of the spirit for instance you are with friends and you just had the witness go and pray 
go and pray. Somebody who is sensitive will excuse himself and leave that gathering and go and pray. The devil will never tell you to give. Every time you hear a voice speak to you about sacrifice, about giving, that is a voice of the Spirit of God talking to you. And most time he won't wait for you to have everything complete. I heard him say, give that car, take that car as a seat. Give this one out. It's a voice of the Spirit speaking to you. Will God drive a car? No. But many a times is to see whether you can rely or depend on him. Even to give out a shoe. I shared how we traveled down to Lagos for a program. Me and my wife. And by the time we got to Lagos, uh, she was given a gift. She was given a gift. And uh, they also gave me a shoe. And the first day of this program, they called for a sacrifice. And I heard the servant of God stood on the first night. He said, we are calling for sacrifice. He said, yes, even if it's a shoe, if it's a shoe, give it. Now they just gave me a shoe. How can you be talking of a shoe? I was trying to touch the word, amen. If it's a shoe, give it that I was touching, touching, but I couldn't touch. By the time we got back home, my wife asked me, he said, I'm going to give this thing that they gave me. You, what are you going to give? I said, you give your own now. You know, many a time, some things you want to give out may be painful. You like the thing, but you have no choice in it to leave you. Isaac needs to leave for some kinds of some kind of blessing to come forth. And I had no choice. I had to pack it that shoe. I gave it out. I threw it into the offering basket. By the time we got back home to my station, I saw a shoe that was five times better than what I threw into the basket waiting for me at home. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Very important. Number three. The proof of spirituality. When you don't see fellowship as a concern. When you don't see fellowship as a burden. Praise the Lord. In Psalm 122 verse 1. I was so glad when they say, let's go to the house of the Lord. Psalm 122 verse 1. I was glad when they said, let us go where? Into the house of the Lord. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Glory to God. I hope you know that if you really have an understanding of the things that you receive when you come to Zion, then you don't come in casually. Because the Bible says that there are innumerable companies of angels in Zion. Praise the Lord. I had somebody praying some few days ago and I heard him say, oh Lord, send the angels. Let the angels come, all the hosts of heaven. Let them come. And within me, I said, no. The Bible said they are already here. He said, there are, there are, it is said they will or you should call them to come. Every time we come into Zion, for upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. There are innumerable companies of angels in Zion. Not only that, the spirit of just men make perfect, they are already in Zion. They are here. Elijah, Moses, all of them. That is what scripture says. The spirit of just men make perfect. Having fellowship with us. That is why we must not despise the place of fellowship. The proof of spirituality, very important. When liberality is done with delight, when liberality, when liberality is done with delight, when you give with delight, with excitement. I've seen people right now that it has gotten to a point they believe in everything in scripture but accept the place of giving. And I tell them, if you don't, if you're doubting it, then why not just destroy the Bible? You don't pick one part of scriptures and you lift the other part of it. Look at what the Bible says here in Proverbs 11 verse 25. The Libra soul shall be made fat. He that watereth shall be watered also. The Libra soul, liberality should be part of you. Should be part of your nation. He that watereth shall also be watered. The last point tonight, proof of spirituality. When your service to God is unconditional. When your service to God is unconditional. In Isaiah 6 verse 8. When God was asking whom shall we send? Whom do we send? Isaiah said. Isaiah 6 verse 8. 
Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. You see, in Isaiah 6, if you read from verse 1, you find that, no, in, 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 uh, in chapter 5 of Isaiah, if you read all through, you find Isaiah insulting everybody. He said, Woe at the scribe. Woe at the lawyers. Woe. The word woe simply means curse. Woe is a curse. When they say woe to you, they are simply saying curse. So Isaiah was basically saying woe to everybody. And that is so common with people who are self-righteous. You see self-righteousness. They felt that they are the only ones that are right. He was busy saying woe to everybody in chapter 5. But in chapter 6 in verse 1, as soon as he got gained access into the presence of the Lord, look at what happened. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, what happened? I saw the Lord. In verse 1 there, Isaiah gained access. He saw the Lord. Can you give us please Isaiah 6 verse 1? Look at it. In the year that King Uzziah died, what happened? I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Look at verse 2. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twine he covered his face and with twine he covered his feet and with twine he did fly. I'm going somewhere. Verse 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Glory. Isaiah that was causing everybody in chapter 5. Now he gained access. In chapter 5, he was operating in the flesh. He was operating in the flesh. But in chapter 6, we saw that, the, that everything, the equation changed. Said the post, move. Give me verse 5, please. Then said I, can you talk with me? Read with me, everybody. Then said I, what? Remember, in chapter 4, everybody is war. You are a sinner. You will go to hell. You are a devil. You are the wife of Satan. He was busy giving people, you know, title. But when he came before reality, he came in the presence of the Lord. He saw his own nakedness. He said, woe is me. For I am undone. Because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of what? Unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. My eyes have seen. He went to verse 6 again. Look at verse 6. He said, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a life coal in his hands, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. What happened? And he laid it upon my mouth. That mouth is using the mouth of carnality. The mouth of the flesh using to insult and to curse everybody. That mouth that deprived him from receiving his inheritance. He said, he touched my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips and thy iniquity is taken away and thy sin touched. Verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Carnality will deprive you from hearing God. A candle man cannot hear God. But now that he has left carnality, now that he can gain access, the place of spirituality, he says, Say, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. When your service to God is unconditional, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Use me. Here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me as the Lord wants somebody. Here am I. Send me. Here am I. Use me. Here am I. Use me as the Lord wants somebody. Here am I. 
send me. That will be your story from this night. In the great name of Jesus, I curse the whole of carnality. I curse the whole of carnality in the life of someone here. That part of you that is always fighting the word of God, I curse it this day. That part of you that is making you to doubt the word of God, I curse it this day. That part of you that is making you not to trust God again, I curse it. In the mighty name of Jesus, now we reactivate your spirituality. We reactivate your antenna, your spiritual antenna to remain sensitive to the voice of God, to the leadings of the Spirit. Lift up your voice to heaven and begin to decree tonight. Shake up. I walk away from the flesh. I walk away from carnality. I like everyone to lose himself right now. Lose yourself, please. Every form of distraction. Lose yourself right now, everyone. And let that part of you begin to flow out. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said the carnal man who cannot please God. It is not possible. We need faith to please God. And the carnal man does not have faith. Carnality, carnal people don't have faith. Fleshy people, earthly people don't have faith. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verse 8, he said, When the Son of Man shall come to the world, shall he find faith? When he comes to the earth, shall he find faith? He can only find faith in those who are spiritual. From this night, your level of spirituality will take a higher turn. In the great name of Jesus. Whatever that is out that is robbing spirituality from men and women around will not see your address. They will not get to you with the creed that access is denied them. Access is denied them. In the name of Jesus, spirituality is a thing of joy to everyone here. You will serve God with excitement. You will serve your nation with excitement. Serve your generation with excitement. In the great name of Jesus, your voice shall remain attentive to the voice of the Spirit of God. You will always hear the voice of the Spirit speaking to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Can somebody say it? Spirituality has a great gain. One more time. Say spirituality pays glory to God. And so shall it be. You are watching, wherever you are watching tonight, I'd like you to, and you have not met with Jesus, I'd like you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I'm a sinner. Wash me. Cleanse me with your blood to serve the living God. Take my names out of the book of death. Write my names in the book of life. From today, I renounce Satan and all of his empty promises. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the life of these precious ones. We cast the whole of sin. We break the whole of the devil in their life. We welcome you into the families of believers. From today, whatever you lay your hands upon to do, you shall excel. You are blessed of the Lord. In Jesus, never pray. Look for a Bible-believing church close to you. Identify yourself with them and God will bless you real good. In Jesus, never pray. Can we stretch for the